Hello and welcome back to another custom video. This time it may be one of my best customs that I've ever made. Uh, so let's get right into how I did that. This is the, I think, a G.I. Joe classified series Snake Eyes. Not too sure, this is just something that was at the bottom of my box of fodder. Uh, great articulation and a good base for a Wolverine body, so I'll be using that. And I think this is a Mezco underbody that would have obviously had a fabric suit over it. Again, it was just at the bottom of my box of fodder, so no idea where it came from. This is obviously a Marvel Legends Captain America head, and it has potential to be a Wolverine head, so I'll be using that as well. Obviously, Wolverine hands here from Marvel Legends, declawing that because those claws were awful, wobbly, and just not that good. So I'll be replacing those with some metal ones later on. So first thing I did is I heated this up, took it apart, and I actually cut away some so that I could pop that on and off quite easily. You'll also see me get rid of the arms later on, um, but I didn't know I wouldn't need them until later in the process. Did the same with this figure, popped it off and then loosened it up. I also put some hot glue in there just to give it a tighter fit reattaching because I accidentally took off too much material. But you can see there you get some incredible range and yeah, ideal for a Wolverine as he's always crouching kind of in like growling poses. And you can see here with that little modification I made and a bit of heat, it pops on and off quite easily from those lower legs. Or well, those lower lower legs, just legs in general. Interesting look there. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have to paint that body. So for all the sculpting, I used Melipart. Possibly quite fragile. I'll also use these sculpting tools. These are just some silicon tips. And taking off the A, which obviously isn't gonna belong on the Wolverine head, and the ears as well. Um, I do have these ears in a little baggie in my fodder box now. Um, <laughs> and here he is without it. He kind of looks like the man meme. So, yeah, an interesting look. But a promising start, a good place to base my sculpting from. So starting off with the nose, I'm not doing any sculpting on camera, um, mainly because it's much harder to sculpt with a camera in between you and what you're sculpting. Also because I wanted to do this for a bit of fun and I didn't want to kind of pressure myself into worsening the outcome by trying to film it. So I figured I'd just get a nice outcome and show you as much of the process as I can while doing that. And like I said, just using some silicon sculpting tools, you can get them on Amazon for cheap. I don't have a link. Uh, I bought them years ago and they've just lasted me since. And that's the last of you'll see that head until the very end of the video. Then here you can see more of that sculpting. Again, most of it just done with the sculpting tools. I did use a scalpel for some of the like, cuts and scratches in there. A very easy sculpt, realistically. Like, this didn't take much effort. Um, just a fair bit of precision and trying to make sure you keep it somewhat symmetrical. You can also see I've used cardboard for the belt and for the kind of bootstraps. Uh, and you'll see I've also used them for his shoulder pads because I didn't really fancy sculpting them out of Millipart or green stuff and then sanding them smooth. So I figured I'd just go straight for card. You can see the little tabs in there as well that will help keep the distance from the actual shoulders themselves. So now straight into painting. All of the blue was primed with grey, all of the yellow was primed with white. Uh, this is the yellow I used. This is the black that I used for some of the bits. Uh, it was all hand painted with black, I didn't spray any of that. And this was a custom mixed blue, there's a lot of different blues, you can see it kind of leaked all over the pot. And it took me about an hour to clean up off the floor at half six in the morning because one of the pots exploded while I was mixing. Now this is the matte lacquer. Um, I used the same brand for the grey primer and the white primer as well, and they ran out so I threw them in the bin. Hence why I don't have the cans to show. You can see some disparity between the brightness of the yellows. That is because I ran out of white primer about halfway through, so some of these are like the very last sprays that the primer could handle. Um, but you don't really end up noticing that very much. The only bit that's a little bit brighter at the very end is the chest, uh, and that's probably because I didn't weather it very much. But popping those in, you can see I shaved those pegs down a little bit. And now they're interchangeable, so I can take these arms off, 
whenever I want and mess around with them a bit. You can see that I didn't paint my hands, that's because I'm going to hand paint those and not really have to worry about paint rub around the joint because there is meant to be black on his gloves anyway. And I think this is quite a good base to be working with since I'm going to be hand painting the details on anyway. This should work. And of course bring your shoulder pads in. Uh, there was a hefty amount of primer and then airbrush paint and then lacquer put on these. So they should be fairly durable bits of card. Speaking of the card details, you can see they blend in quite nicely with the body now. And this is the Legacy Collection Marvel Legends Wolverine. Uh, or it might be called Logan on the packaging. Um, I'm going to be taking his arms, as you can see here. And the heads, because the heads are quite nice. Hairstyle isn't quite accurate for what we're going for, but it's a good enough Hugh Jackman and it's the only Wolverine I own. So cutting off those pegs a bit. You can see they now fit really nicely into this upper torso, which I did use the Miller part to cover that hole. And all that blue paint you can see is the explosion that happened at that time in the morning. At this point my camera freaked out and this is also part of the reason that I am missing footage for various bits because the camera just was not cooperating. But now using the rotary tool I'm going to go and sand the peg down a bit. You can see there it's a fair bit thinner than the original peg was and this will mean that I can swap it in and out of that body. And so now we can have the sleeveless look. That does unfortunately mean he won't have the gauntlets because there was no way in hell I was re-sculpting gauntlets to fit over this especially for what I want to do with the end bit. Uh, the gloves being interchangeable at the end is good enough for me. And maybe at some point I'll make some like, little card sleeves that go over the exposed forearms. But hopefully you can see there just how easy these are to interchange. It's literally a plug system. They pop in, they pop out. Enough pressure they don't just fall out. Uh, easy enough that I'm not feeling like I'm breaking the figure to tell them apart. And then here you can see all the yellow detailing I've done, which is just on the forearms and the hands. And then I did want to show you the black and the blue, just kind of going over the stages. But my phone died and I'm on a time crunch with moving house, so I kind of tried to get this painted while my phone was recharging. You can see here I've done a brown wash in the bullet holes and the stab wounds, which was just a Citadel brown wash. And I've done a black wash over the rest of the figure, which is the non-oil Citadel wash. And I think it's come out quite nicely, you've got a good bit of detail. Uh, and I think he's starting to look pretty movie accurate, which is quite good considering it's just a snake eyes base body. With a bit of Miller part and some card glued to it. So you can see the refined details on the hands and the gloves. There's also a little bit of silver dry brushing and well, that's it actually. <laughs> now I did also get these metal claws, which you can see make a huge difference to this figure. They look so much nicer. Uh, they will be linked below if you want some for yourself. Obviously it's Marvel Legends UK, so I think it might be UK only. Um, I know Can of Beam sell some as well, which is probably easier for the American viewers. And here he is. This is him pretty much done. I could call it done here. This is kind of just version A finished. This is what he looks like at the beginning of the movie. This could just be the end of this custom. But I want to do a little bit more than this. So bringing in what is an actual airbrush white and a just acrylic beige red. Um, I did a base coat of the white, mixed the beige and the white and some water so that it would go through the airbrush properly. And here's the body. Uh, there's also some hot glue in there so that the arms pop in properly because obviously I trimmed down the pegs so the sockets didn't fit quite as flush. And now this is a fairly good paint match. It's maybe a hair darker than the arms, but as you can see, it's barely noticeable. I think maybe I'm the only one that can notice it at this point because I've been staring at it for hours. So there is a slight tone difference, but again, barely noticeable. And then with the Logan head on there, I could just make an original Weapon X figure at this point, um, and maybe I'll do that at some point in the future. So using that Rhinox Hide Citadel paint, and what's a pretty torn up paintbrush at this point, I'm just going to dry brush on uh, his chest and ab hair. But before we do that, he needs some nipples. So I'm going to use the end of this paintbrush uh, just to dab on some little dots, which you can see there. Um, and they'll dry to be slightly darker because I've not mixed in any of that white. 
slightly uneven, but no one's nipples are identical. So this is how I did all the ab hair uh, and the chest hair, and I ended up doing some arm hair and back hair as well. Anytime it seems to get a bit too intense, I'm either blending it or wiping it off with my thumb and then going and adding some more. This is just one of those trial and error points of customizing. You'll reach the point you're happy with eventually. And if you're anything like me, you'll think you can go a little bit better and then end up ruining it. So basically once you're happy with it, don't risk ruining it unless you know exactly what it needs. Um, I often end up ruining some of my customs by trying to go a little bit further. Whereas this probably would have been fine. You can see I end up with quite a dark patch on his top left peck that I couldn't get rid of without just making it grey. So it ended up staying there. But... And now it's time to add the final piece. Ah, oh, finally. This custom took me less than a week, so I'm actually quite impressed with how quick I was able to get this done. But this was like very late nights and very early mornings, because I'm, like I said, moving house. But I'm very happy with how he's turned out. This head sculpt may be one of my best kind of like hand sculpted additional things. I suppose I didn't sculpt it from scratch, but it isn't an easy kind of kit bash. This took a fair bit of work to get it to this point, and I think it turned out fairly good. I'm pretty happy with it. You can see those trenches that run across the yellow bit. Those are obviously sculpted in rather than raised. So what I did is I took the scalpel and I cut one direction to do the line and then cut back the other direction with a slight angle and it took out a wedge. So that's a fun new trick I learned to do during this project. And then obviously this version of him here is what you see at the very end of the movie. And then this is the version you see probably about midway through the movie. He should again have his gauntlets on here. I don't have the gauntlets, I didn't make anything interchangeable like that. I suppose I could have made them out of card, but I haven't done that yet. Um, I could just switch his gloves over, but uh, I didn't think about that while I was recording the video. So yeah, maybe at some point I'll make some bits that sleeve over his forearms so that I can pair them with his gloves and have the full accurate version, but I'm pretty happy with how he is for the moment. Now here you can see him paired up with my custom Deadpool. This is the Deadpool 2 Amazon exclusive version, the burnt version, which obviously I've repainted. And you can see the ab crunch I've modified there. So his bandolier thing uh, is actually channeled into his torso so that it crunches over it. But yeah, so happy with how this Wolverine figure's come out. The options he has, the fact that he actually works, there's not much paint rub on him. Uh, there's like barely any. The fact that it so efficiently fits together, the posability is so nice for a Wolverine figure. You can see he gets into those proper crunches. Yeah, very, very happy with this guy. I do think my only gripe is that I haven't got the gauntlets that interchange over those unsleeved arms. And obviously the unmasked head's hair is all wrong and the age is wrong. But man, does this make me happy to have it finished and actually looking like a movie accurate version of the Wolverine suit. So yeah, very, very happy with how this guy came out. Um, do stick around, I plan doing some stop motions, the diorama for this scene as well, which I have some plans for already. But yeah, stick around, I have some more stuff planned for Deadpool and Wolverine related figures, dioramas, stuff like that. But thank you so much for watching and Enjoy these last few photos and I'll see you in the next video.